Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, saving your disaster campaign, the meat grinder, this time episode number 8. Today a bit of a different episode, uh, to be honest, so you're not going to hear any original sound. Let me shortly uh, talk you through what happened. Uh, whilst I was recording uh, the episodes, my camera, which also includes uh, the wonderful microphone that I'm using, um, had started to uh, get a bit uh, iffy over time. I noticed that and most prominently one of my uh, latest videos, uh, the tier list for um, Chimera Squad got completely corrupted because essentially the camera was only recording um, in a uh, very high-pitched voice sounding almost like a chipmunk. Uh, normally I'm looking through all of the videos just to have a glance and uh, seeing if the, if the quality is good enough. When I'm doing um, bulk sessions, uh, yeah, one after the other though, I simply assume that OBS will manage the recording quality fine, so that's totally on me. Two episodes, this one and the next one, essentially got corrupted as well. I have since replaced uh, my microphone and now am uh, using a little slightly upgraded microphone. Um, still uh, hopefully not going to have the same problem in the future, but that is why essentially I wanted to still continue um, kind of for the consistency sake to have both um, of the game uh, play footage with me. So you're going to see me essentially just re, um, uh, referring what's happening in the campaign and hitting the highlights. I've uh, used the original video, um, sped it up to twice uh, the speed. So we're just going through the highlights. It's maybe a bit of a different format and who knows, you can uh, leave a comment down below if you like uh, the format. It is a bit more time investment uh, for me, but I figured instead of just um, yeah uh, not releasing the two uh, videos whatsoever, I might as well give it a try. Here, the thought process that I'm uh, thinking about was essentially we want to continue reducing the avatar progress. So we're trying to get to Australia, which is all fine and good. We're uh, putting a couple of um, uh, yeah, uh, engineers into resistance contacts and continue to move. The first important uh, portion of the video is, yeah, let's go back, uh, is exactly here. Uh, in the covered actions report, the covered uh, report uh, gives us Colonel Dozen de Dort, uh, which is a skirmisher, so absolutely fantastic. Got another Colonel in our squad. And I am spending a lot of time discussing then afterwards uh, what sort of um, what sort of mission I should go to. I think I end up with Mental Fortitude uh, uh, Resistance Order mission because uh, Mental Fortitude is probably one of the strongest resistance orders that exist. Panic, uh, uh, Obsession, Berserk, Shattered. So all of the negative effects that you normally need to clear with um, the revival protocol automatically end at the end of the alien's turn, essentially, uh, yeah, making them completely useless. So uh, the uh, you, it makes you immune to them, uh, which is great. Uh, afterwards, I go a little bit uh, through the skilling of uh, the Templar. Just a thought process here, in case you're interested in how uh, how I would uh, skill him. I thought about what the guy who sent in uh, the material could uh, use uh, the most. And really what the Templar excels in is using a couple of the cooldowns. So we uh, gave him the option to shift his um, one of his actions to someone else. Uh, Whiplash as a free action, just increasing um, uh, damage output if you really need to. Um, Pull the target towards you. Pull the target. Uh, pull you towards the target. Blade storm. So a lot of the melee and positioning topics. Extra, uh, uh, extra um, inventory space, as well as reduction of cooldowns. And that's really how I. Th these are the core abilities of uh, the skirmisher. The rest is all fine and good. I personally am not a big fan of uh, the reflex or return fire. That's all bullshit in my opinion because you don't want to be hit in the first place to begin with so we're i think ending up with that um and maybe go for battle lord now probably not battle lord now it's fine um that is uh, these are the base skills let's maybe continue and jump towards the actual mission which is happening uh, here 
So we're going for a guerrilla operations mission. Let's take a short look what that mission uh, has been. There we go. Eastern Europe, um, we're trying to get another engineer, which really doesn't, uh, doesn't mean a lot at this point. I think I took it... Um, I think I took it because, uh, heck, the Advent Station was the easiest to do, uh, to be honest. And whom we're going to take with us here is essentially a similar team uh, than uh, before. We're going in Dual Sniper, our um, uh, Spark, an uh, uh, Assault, uh, Grenadier, and a Specialist. Let's jump right into the action. And the advantageous part uh, here is I don't need to wait for a loading screen. We're immediately going to jump into the action. That's the fun part. So we're starting here at high ground, and as you can see, I'm debating with myself um, how far I would like to go. Uh, the uh, mech takes uh, the point. Um, we only have seven turns to essentially get to the target location, so we're using the mech kind of as a scout here. And uh, once uh, you see that there is kind of a tower, that's a good sign that you want to uh, put um, everyone else into a cover position, um, moving the assault to, together with the mech uh, downstairs. Um, so uh, we do with the grenadier. Uh, the specialist as well as all of the snipers are standing up here. Uh, I decide to not move the specialist too far in because it's the last uh, movement. And surprisingly enough, uh, we are seeing the first pack, heavy mech, uh, two elite uh, soldiers. That's so far so good, pretty, uh, pretty much average at this point. I debate if we're now engaging, and this is going to at least trigger uh, the tower as well. And before we take shots, there is... The third pack. So we find ourselves kind of in um, a difficult situation because six turns means we can't wait forever. At the same time, we also need to appreciate that uh, there are three packs. And we're moving, uh, originally moving back, but um, there was a vision uh, bug here where the tower just um, got an extended range of vision. And uh, that all of a sudden was uh, not so much fun anymore as we are now completely revealed. Um, we made quick progress with the tower. Uh, the main reason why I did that is uh, the tower uh, usually uh, has a, a bad percent chance to hit, but if it hits, it can hit quite hard. So um, that was easy to, uh, to kill or to overcome. Now, the real question is how to deal with all of uh, that situation. We're charging in with run and gun because uh, of the overwatch. And we're taking away the overwatch with our heavy um, weapon. I calculated that we want to use teamwork in order to um, hand actions further uh, to our um, assault. And... We're also putting, if I'm not mistaken, I was um, I was putting the Grenadier there. Uh, I de I'm debating with myself whether or not moving the Grenadier forward is a good idea because theoretically we could pull another pack. Uh, and although that might look hectic as a gameplay, it actually isn't. Uh, we're trying to take um, out the mech, at least with a shutdown, 80 plus percent. Seems like a good idea. Um, I'm... Uh, even going for a control of the enemy because that would save me a mimic beacon. Uh, getting successful here, if I would have been unsuccessful, I would have simply thrown the mimic beacon and just called it uh, a day. But that way, the mech is now the new mimic beacon. It also provides line of sight, so they will focus on the mech. And uh, nicely uh, for us, or advantageous for us, the snipers can now use the max vision as well. We're using the targets that we can um, uh, take out first um, to our advantage. I'm still debating with myself if this movement here is a good idea. Uh, for full disclosure, if I uh, um, if you ever need to do that movement, you should do it before even starting the rest of the fight. Um, our snipers hit for a ton in the meantime. Uh, focusing mainly the advent officer so that he can't um, uh, that he can't uh, use his marking ability and then essentially now 
starting um, uh, to focus on the same uh, targets here. The plasma grenade would be cool, but it doesn't really um, work out. Uh, seeing that there are so many um, enemies still, I feel that the uh, that the Mimic Beacon is probably the right uh, way to go. We're also using an 8 protocol just in case the Mimic Beacon gets killed and uh, that um, allows us to keep our assault safe. I didn't know at this time that the Warlock would uh, show up, not the Warlock, the um, Reaper. So that was the next natural, um, that was the next natural um, uh, reaction here. They are now going for the um, uh, Mimic Beacon. And as you can see, everyone's nicely clustering up. After a couple of hits, the Mimic Beacon goes down. And yeah, the Purifier really doesn't do a whole lot. Good. I'm looking to find a way of getting an angle without uh, spending movement. That's why I was trying to grapple here. Doesn't really work out. I kind of want to go um, all the way to the front, but that doesn't work out either. Instead, I'm clustering up um, and wanted to use my rockets downstairs um, or on uh, the mech itself. Both uh, ways work. I decided to go and uh, take the guys downstairs down. Yeah, pretty simple, moving up. Uh, killing that guy. The Archon is almost dead as well. But we now have a new problem because we have triggered yet a new pack. Going into full cover is exactly what we wanted to do. I just want better positioning. That's why I'm even sacrificing some of the, um, some of the shots that we could take. This here is blowing away the tower by destroying the uh, card, so it's uh, instantly killing it, which is a fair utilization um, of, an, uh, of a grenade. A grenade for a tower generally is okay trade. Uh, keeping a tight formation, and now it's time to um, basically go for the purifier. There wasn't much that he could have done because everyone's immune uh, to uh, his fire attack. And the last man standing, so to speak, is uh, the mech itself. Uh, we have one more round on uh, the heck of the mech, whilst the hunter continues to move in. I know at this point that the timer will freeze because we have officially triggered the hunter. Mech completely moves in, knowing that uh, we're taking the overwatch shot and knowing that we're going to trigger that pack. Fair enough. Two mutants and a codex are a bit more challenging and just a lot of hit points to chew through and this is a more difficult position than it might look like guys because here the thought process was hey how about we're just letting them come uh, and rush our position and there's a lot of uh, like cover missing in the midfield here so I find myself in that unfortunate situation where we can't really flank them and at the same time they are in relatively good cover like full cover for the one mutant half cover uh, for the other mutant and even if we destroy the full cover as you've seen there uh, he still has indestructible half cover left over uh, not the very best uh, position to start with so what I find myself uh, uh, doing is essentially moving only with a few soldiers uh, forward and again trying to get into better positions. Luckily, with the utilization of our um, of our cooldowns, we're doing an okay job to deal with the situation. Run and gun is not ready yet, so I'm thinking what would be the better uh, choice. Moving over here or and shooting or uh, doing something else. I think I still do have an, uh, uh, an action, teamwork action left over. We're taking the shot, which was great, and now the sniper has yet another shot. 
might as well take out the codecs which were not Mac being the only one who could really move forward is now moving in and I'm thinking about the Mimic Beacon and how to deal with it. The cool part about it is if you use the Mimic Beacon the Codex will not use its um, ability to basically teleport in and psionic bomb. It instead will start to move towards uh, the beacon so you can use that to your advantage. This might be a bit over uh, eager I wanted to shred um, the codex, uh, the um, the uh, chosen, and I could have easily just waited because now is a probably even better time to shred. Moving up uh, with the mech uh, just to pull that overward shot, and now I think we're going to kill the uh, codex. There we go, nice one. Thanks to blue screen rounds, that's a one shot. I do believe that I'm now trying to, I uh, was now trying to think um, how to remove the cover again. Still, run and gun is down. That's the problem of just fighting, so to speak, back to back to back. Um, all of the cooldowns that you would like to have available are not available with run and gun. This whole situation would have looked different. We're finding ourselves kind of in this open uh, field. Uh, for some of our um, operators, like for the snipers, it's fantastic. For others, uh, like for instance the um, assault, it's just not such a great environment. And although we're hitting him quite often, it's not really... Um, a one round kill which you usually want to do uh, once you do have uh, the chosen um, right next to you so essentially what we're doing is I'm uh, I know that we're going to be flanked either way so might as well take the secured 11 points of damage and of course uh, he is just summoning four not one not two not three but four massive um, uh, a massive douchebags, uh, aka Advent uh, soldiers, troopers, um, which is uh, just 40 or 48 uh, hit points in that case as additional uh, tonnage on the uh, field for his side. So we got to deal with them now because even if you kill him, um, they are not going to go away. What I'm thinking is uh, might as well do the best out of our situation. Unfortunately, some of our soldiers already are completely out of ammunition, which stings. Um, uh, so we cannot just kill everyone. And you can see just as uh, run gun is coming up, um, I will probably use it again. The thought process here is whom can I uh, kill and uh, how fast can I kill them? The guy up here is relatively easy to deal with. Um, we have a few other candidates down here which are more difficult to deal with. So trying to get in a somewhat flanking position, um, that is possible for against two of them. Uh, however, it's not that easy to, uh, to get those guys down. Using our last Mimic Beacon is what I'm thinking about and I'm probably going to do that as well. So, going for a flanking position. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I think I'm currently calculating whom to use in order to kill all of uh, those soldiers down there. The mech pretty clearly needs to move up here and um, hit the flank guy. There we go. I used the position that would help me uh, next turn to essentially get rid of uh, them. This is going to be a flank position against uh, the soldier in full cover. Hunter's instincts um, uh, trigger but don't kill him, which is unfortunate. We're repositioning into full cover.
I find out that I cannot hit both of them, but yep, thanks to the pistol skills. There was a good chance that I could have killed um, two nonetheless. We're going into full cover. Even though we could have been flanked here, we know that there is a Mimic Beacon left over, which is fine. There we go. Two down. And there's the Mimic Beacon. There we go. Everyone's focusing on the Mimic Beacon. Uh, pretty solid so far from a game, uh, uh, from a fight perspective, haven't taken any damage. Um, unfortunately, the Chosen now does no longer focus on the Mimic Beacon. Fortunately for us, he uses his weakest skill, uh, which the mech is also immune against. That's perfect. We stick in full cover, uh, use that bit of flanking that, which we can get. Um, here we do have the same issue as beforehand. Can't really get to them, uh, which was kind of um, a, a pretty nasty um, theme of the entire fight. I never really had that full control over the battlefield. There were a lot of situations where I needed to take suboptimal choices just because, quite frankly, um, the enemies had a nice positioning and we were it, we were always pushing into them. So if I could do something different, if I were to able to replay that mission, I would probably set up a stronger crossfire and just let them come uh, to us. Uh, I think we wasted a lot of potential by simply pushing and pushing and pushing. You see those uh, shots here were into full cover. Okay, uh, fair enough from high ground and with endgame soldiers. That's not a big concern, but it felt that we were always lacking the momentum. I needed again here to reload because we were out of ammunition, fighting for three or four rounds in a row, just so that we can kind of get to that um, skirmisher. Um, uh, not skirmisher uh, towards that uh, chosen and I was trying to use uh, the aid protocol um, just to uh, to trigger another overwatch shot unfortunately that didn't work and you can see once I do have the action economy and they uh, he has nowhere um, left to run we're pretty much on the safe side um, and with the exception of one injured uh, soldier whom we can heal. The rest of the combat was fine. I was a bit pissed at this um, point in time because I wanted to have a flawless mission um, and felt that I didn't play the situation optimally. In hindsight, by now looking at the um, at uh, the um, mission again, I think the game uh, play itself was fine. Uh, the deck was just stacked against us when looking at uh, the starting position. We pushed into a tower plus two packs, then another pack um, added, then the chosen summoned effectively what is a pretty large pack on top of it. Uh, so you're looking at five packs plus the chosen and um, there was no there was no pause in between the fight itself. So pretty much back-to-back -back action all uh, the way. It turned out to be okay, and we even got a promotion out of it, uh, so I think it was fine. Um, again, could have been played a bit more clean. Uh, let's hit the other remaining highlights. Here we go. Next highlight is the covert action that is complete. So we got ourselves a new resistance operation. And I think at this point, um, we do have three times reduce avatar progress. We're using the one uh, which also gives additional aim. Um, I'm trying to give the guy really solid uh, soldiers. And uh, I think I'll do something about the soldier captured because you never want, um, you never want to be, be in a situation where that could be happening. Yeah, getting myself a few more resources here. 
and since uh, Ethereum was in high demand, we just solved that issue. Get an additional, um, even upgrading uh, the resistance ring. And yeah, now we can prevent uh, the soldier from being captured. So yeah, reduction of um, of uh, the avatar progress uh, is pretty much the name of the game. Did I forget anything? And did I forget anything? No, uh, it was uh, a month a month end. Maybe we can take a look here. This is really how you are getting your campaign back on track. Retaliation, guerrilla ops, uh, council mission, region contacted, uh, rumors uh, investigated two, technology research covered actions four, proving grounds and uh, an ambush completed. So I think six or seven missions during this month. Um, basically everything swung into our um, into our favor. Only disappointing part is the knowledge of uh, the chosen is now has now reached a point where. Uh, she's almost ready to attack, which will be a bit problematic for the guy once he gets the uh, campaign back. We got Mental Fortitude, which is fantastic, so we're going to add that. It's just a very, very, very good uh, resistance order. And that's pretty much it. Here's a couple of good uh, resistance orders. I like the Between the Eyes. Um, we, I certainly like the... Um, Metal Fortitude, Weak Points is fantastic as well, additional shredding. So those three alone are pretty damn good. Voluntary Army can be nice. It's a good, uh, not perfect, but good uh, trade. Um, and that is pretty much it. Got a couple of uh, researches, but none of that is really, really, really important. Uh, next big uh, topic is another resistance operation. And I think I'm going to go for more um, avatar project reduction or promotions. Yeah, that one looks tasty. I think I'm going to end up uh, taking that one, dodge plus 10 and a reduction. Uh, maybe we're taking the promotion as well. Either way is really good. That's another promotion. So yeah, the only reason why I'm um, prioritizing promotions is I want to get him high-level soldiers as fast as possible. But dodge plus 10, holy moly, on Templar, that is pretty damn good. So yeah, we have been lucky and uh, with uh, the missions um, and also with the covert ops uh, actions removing all of the negative traits from our soldiers. And I think that's pretty much the end of uh, this uh, session. Um, there is... What's the next mission? It's always the next mission. Let's see. Okay, so... The whole thing ends with me uh, reflecting about uh, that we probably need to infiltrate um, one of the facilities now, which is a good idea. Um, so I think if I'm not completely mistaken that that's going to be the part of uh, the next mission. Anyways, that brings us to the end of today's session. Um, a one hour mission reviewed in 28 minutes, so pretty much condensed uh, content. Uh, which you hopefully will enjoy. I hope you liked uh, that um, way of presenting it instead of just me um, uh, ignoring the uh, the video altogether and taking it offline. If you liked what you've seen and want to support the channel, feel free to subscribe. Uh, as well as we're going to see yet another review in uh, of the next mission uh, in uh, two days and then the normal... Um, uh, saving your disaster campaign will continue. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a great one, and see you soon. Bye-bye.